O'Neill is back for her second appearance at the PBA Summer Series. But this time as the number one seed. The four-time titleist goes for number five in OKC. The PBA Badger Open is right now. Casino Resort Event Center in Oklahoma City. The PBA Summer Swing continues with a Badger Open. Five of the world's best bowlers compete for a title. Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Oklahoma City. Great to have with us. This is Dave Ryan. I'll be joined by Randy Peterson, my Hall of Fame broadcast partner in a moment. This is the third of five Summer Swing events on CBS Sports Network. Already this summer, we've seen a perfect 300 game and a title from Sean Rash. And Ronnie Russell wins his first title on U.S. Soil. Now the Badger Open, a five-man step ladder format. We've got some big names here. Mika Korbunemi, a 13-time titleist of the five seed. Rookie Marshall Kent, just 21 years old, goes for his first title. Pete Weber has won 37 championships, third all-time Hall of Famer. And the top seed is Bill O'Neill, making his second summer swing appearance. Randy Peterson joined now by Brian Valenta, the two-hander, going for his first career title. Hey, thanks, Dave Ryan. Brian, this is your first ever telecast in a singles event. How do you feel going in? Oh, I'm excited. I'm just uh, ready to go. I just got to keep slow with the pattern and go from there. I noticed that you're applying some pretty heavy-duty sandpaper to some of your equipment through practice. What was the strategy behind that? Well, I feel that if I can get everybody left, I have a better chance, and we'll go from there. Why is that? Oh, I have a higher rev rate. I think my rev rate can be uh, useful. Brian, thanks for, thanks for your time. Good luck today. Thank you. Randy, Brian, thank you. Our PBA Summer Swing, five events. All started with a Wolf Open. John Rash, we talked about the 300 game to begin that tournament. Wow, what an electrifying start that was. The Bear Open, Ronnie Russell. The very challenging Bear pattern really chewed up some of the best bowlers in the world. Badger Open, the longest pattern at 52 feet. Oklahoma Open and the Summer King of the Swing will wrap it up from Oklahoma City. The number four seed owns one PBA regional title from Lockport, Illinois, Brian Valenta. That's not far from Chicago, Lockport, Illinois. Seventh year pro, but no titles for Brian. Go wow! It sure does go left. <laughs> Turn it off. And Why a not? strike to start the match. The number five seed is a 13-time PBA Tour titleist from Heartland, Michigan. Major Mika Koivuniemi. Heartland just outside of Detroit, originally from Finland. A brilliant career. For Mika Korbunemi, including three major championships. On the right lane, finds the pocket. All ten down for Mika, and a great start for both our bowlers in the Badger Open. Let's talk about this long 52-foot pattern, Mr. Peterson. What do you see here? Well, the lane's only 60 feet in length, Dave Ryan. So there's only eight feet of back end after 52 feet, and that's why you're not going to see that big turn or big left turn from the right-handers into the pocket. High volume, medium scoring condition. You can see the players are extremely deep to start. Part of that was Brian Valenta's strategy using sanded equipment in practice to break the middle part of the lane down. We actually saw Mika in practice playing the extreme outside part of the lane. He's opted to play in. Cubs in high. On that left, got a break with his Brooklyn strike to begin play on the left. 
four seven up for me. This is kind of old school in terms of ball reaction because you don't see the big snap in the back end. Players are going to play what's called kind of a roll set shot. They get the ball to kind of read early and have the ball just set right into the one three pocket. Avoids a chop, picks up his spare. Ryan told us he started bowling at age three, 26 years. He's worked, he's practiced, he's competed. Maybe this is his day he finally. Right. Yes. All 10 down for Brian Valenta, 4 c little uni unique style, even though he uses the two-handed method, he puts his thumb into the first knuckle. Uses tennis shoes, not bowling shoes. Creates a lot of power. He can really th throw it hard. Put a lot of revolutions on it. And he's going to give it all he's got at the bottom of the swing. Have that ball just start revving up. Go right, go right. Help! All the six. Woo. Woo. Couple breaks in the left lane there for Brian Valenti. Two big breaks on the left lane. He's already in the sixth arrow. It's game one. I mean, that's just incredible how the oil pattern and the integrity of the oil pattern gets destroyed with about 20 minutes of practice from the players based on where they warmed up. Pocket nicely. 15 years on tour. Now there's the classic form of Mika Koivuniemi who's won all over the world. Qatar, Vienna, Japan, just to name a few. There's his arsenal, LX16. Very strong. This left lane looks like the lane that needs to be conquered today. It looks like it has early hook already. Comes in high, 6-10 left. Left lane has not been pretty so far. And the problem with this long wall pattern, Dave Ryan, is if you miss your target too far to the right or give it a little bit of room, the ball has absolutely no chance of recovering. No one's hit the pocket yet on the left lane. Big shot coming up for Brian Valenta. He was visibly nervous in the interview. Nervous to start, which is understandable for a a player making a singles telecast for the first time, but he can really take advantage of some good breaks right here with a strike on the right lane. And just like, he does, buddy. And just like that, he's got the first four. He's going to figure out a way to try to get the ball to the pocket on the left lane in complete control through four frames going against a guy who's a major title holder. Front four. As you see Brian's arsenal. Endless nightmare. Right now he's Mika Koivuniemi's nightmare. Can someone figure out the left lane? Well, it's a strike. <laughs> Again, he's pretty lucky. Keep and he knows it. Keep any and all sharp objects away from Mika Koivuniemi right now because his opponent has just thrown three consecutive Brooklyns in a row on the left lane at him. I'm not sure I've ever seen that before. Not three in a row like that. I had a guy throw five straight Brooklyns at me in match play once in Merritt Island, Florida. His name is Purvis Granger. Needless to say, I didn't buy him dinner afterwards. 
Here's Mika. Great shot. Crunch in 10 down to the pit. I know Merritt Island well. Living in Auburn, just across the Indian River. Beautiful part of the country. Big, tall man, so he's got to really get his legs into it. You see the high back swing. Mika jogs four to five miles a day to keep his body in shape. Extremely important for a man of his height to keep those knees and those legs in shape. And well, there's not too many out here that are in better shape than he is. He's about 6'4". Last four tour titles, all been overseas in Finland, Austria, Qatar, and Japan. Can he hit this left lane? He didn't take a Brooklyn strike right now. Seven. Unlucky. Good shot, unlucky. All the luck right now. Brian Bellett's his corner. Mika just gives us a fraction of air to the right. And unlucky not tripping the swishing 5-7 out. A hit that the late Dick Weber made famous. There's a 7. Already in the PBA Summer Swing with Sean Rash, you've had a 300 game. Ryan Valenta, the front five, and a big lead. It's like a perfect game in baseball. Could we get another one? Stick around with Just Mike. Oklahoma's Grand Casino Resort PBA Summer Swing Badger Open is brought to you by GEICO. Saving people money on more than just car insurance. By Storm. Bowlers serving bowlers. Storm is the bowlers company. And by Brunswick. Find your next ball at bowlwithbrunswick.com. Here in Oklahoma City, E.J. Tackett among many watching this great competition today. CBS, CBS Sports Network. Randy, take us through the lanes here and how they'll break down. Dave, these two oil patterns couldn't be more different. Take a look at the wolf oil pattern here on the left lane, 32 feet in length. The badger oil pattern, 52 feet in length. We're using the blue dye again. You can see that the wolf oil pattern is a lot darker in terms of the blue dye. The reason is because there's the same amount of oil on both lanes, but once you start stretching that oil pattern another 20 feet, well, the blue dye gets lighter. Let's take a look at what this means in terms of ball reaction. Standing on the 25th board, looking at second arrow, you're going to see a huge difference. Left lane, as soon as the ball comes off the end of the pattern, it goes sideways. Right lane, well, not so much. Here you go, lane level. Second arrow, ball goes runaway Brooklyn on the shorter pattern. Longer pattern, well, there's just not enough friction to get it back. It hits the 6'10 in the face, Dave. Hey, Randy, thanks. Great demo there. The Wolf, the first summer swing event, and we saw the 300 game, a brilliant performance by Sean Rash. Here we are, the Badger, Brian Valenta, looking for the front six. He's got really lucky with a couple of his first five strikes so far. How about half a dozen, young man? No. Well, he missed on his good lane. That was his good lane. He missed way inside, and crosses over this time he doesn't get the nice break and tripping the six out so where he let the ball go the two-hander has the six along with Oscar Palermo and player of the year Jason Belmonte two other two-handers which has been interesting, the reaction among the bowling community. How do you feel about the two-handed delivery? I, I'm fine with it. it, it it's extremely difficult to, to do. I've tried it. Um, I, I think it's a, there's an art form to it. On the left lane, there's the look. Into the one-three pocket. Brad told us yesterday Good when ball. he first picked up a ball at age three, he threw with two hands. He hasn't stopped since. He's never been a one-handed player. Well, keep in mind that Jason Belmonte and Oscu Palermo do not use their thumb. Brian Valenta does. Even though he just puts it into the first knuckle, he's got a thumb in the ball. He's got himself a big lead. Six. 
Seven for eight, Mika working on a spare. That's right through the nose. It's a baby split. Trouble. Three ten. He really needed that hit in the sixth frame and was unlucky not tripping the seven out. And now it's through the nose, leaving the three ten. And there's no way Mika can catch up if he doesn't start stringing strikes together. So this ball's inside of target. That's where you see him trying to wave it off. Ah, doesn't pick it up. Chops a three. Ten is left up. Open frame for Mika. Time for Randy and this week's track tech talk. Oh, we'll talk about Mika and in, in this form that that he uses in lofting. But here's a little bit more traditional look with Norm Duke and how he sets the ball down on the lane early. But Mika, growing up in Europe, where the front part of the lane had a propensity to be very dry, Mika developed a style to where he would loft the ball over the front part of the lane and eliminate basically the first eight to ten feet. He brought it over here to the States and it's worked nicely for him. That time again avoids the big four, does have a four step. And you're asking yourselves right now, prob why, why isn't Mika lofting it a whole lot now? Well, because the lanes are really slick. And when the lanes get really slick, the quicker the ball's onto the lane, the better the chance it has of getting into a roll. Mika doesn't need to start lofting right now. So you want to delay hook? Loft it. Ball can't hook in the air. We saw Tommy Jones doing that last week. You know, he moved so far left, he ran out of lane, and he had to start lofting the ball to keep it on line. Didn't work out for Tommy at the top seed. Chris Barnes struggled as well on the PBA summer swing. Nope. I think he's in a lot of trouble here. Valenta stays clean, avoids the split. And just has the six pin now for a spare. All Brian has to do now is just fill frames and make spares. Mika, the best he can shoot if he strikes out, it's 207. Brian Valenta's already in the 230s. Stays clean and he'll take on Marshall Kent. He can even have an open frame here in the ninth and tenths if he has good count. There's nothing that Mika can do about it. From our All-American at Lindenwood University in St. Charles, Missouri. NAIA school. There's a 10-pin where he won a national championship. Singles and team championship. Not too far from Pete Weber's hometown in the St. Louis area. And actually competed with Pete. When he was in college, he told us yesterday a pretty interesting story. Imagine the look on his face when he got to meet and then play with the great Pete Weber in an exhibition event. I got to compete against Pete Weber a lot. It wasn't much fun. Pete Weber is on this show. This game is over. Brian Valenta is going to move on to, to face Marshall Kent. Just 21 years old. He could just never had that look, did he? On either lane. And Brian Valenta, seeking his first career PBA Tour title, has knocked off future Hall of Famer and 13-time titleist Mika Koibunemi with ease. The front five, a couple of Brooklyn strikes, led the way. Some breaks? Yeah, he'll take it. Valenta advances. The three-seed Marshall Kent awaits. Four-seed Brian Valenta. Blockport, Illinois, outside Chicago. An easy win over... Future PBA Hall of Famer Mika Krobanemi from Finland, 237-172. So Marshall Kent, the three seed, only 21 years old, has never won a title just like Valenta from Yakima, Washington, awaits Brian Valenta in the next match, and he's joined now by Randy. Thanks, Dave. Marshall, you're no stranger to making the telecast, but this is your first championship round as a professional. Does that feel any different to you? Not really. It's still the same atmosphere. It's still an arena, and you still got to go out and bowl one game and beat one opponent at a time. Well, now, the, the lanes didn't look exactly uh, to be high scoring. How are you going to attack this championship pair? Uh, I got a couple of different options, uh, a couple of different ball choices. I think uh, I might end up throwing one different ball on one lane and another one on another. So um, I think that's going to kind of be my strategy to go off of, and we'll go from there. Marshall, thanks. Good luck. Thanks, man.
Marshall Kent, first TV appearance as a pro. Just turned recently before the PBA summer swing from amateur status to professional. He'll take on Brian Valente in our next match from Oklahoma City. Great look at the Santa Fe Depot. Shawnee, railroad depot made up of limestone blocks, two to three feet thick, castle-like appearance. One of the landmarks of this area, a 60 foot turret built in 1902. Placed in the National Register of Historic Places in 1974. Great sight there, great bowling here. Grand Casino, the event center. The Badger Open top six. On the top seed, Pete Weber, the legend behind him. Jake Peters, the defending champ, just out of the top five of the show in sixth. But look how tight the numbers are. This is the, the most tightest contested event that I can remember in recent times. At the end of qualifying, the separation from the number one seed to the number five seed was 18 pins. Look at that lob for Valenta. And for a moment at the big four. And only the four pin stands. Yeah, remember we uh, did a little thing on loft with Mika. Well, Brian Valenta knows how to loft it. Nice break there. He had the big four standing. Now it's just the four pin. There's the four. The number three seed is a two-time collegiate bowler of the year from Yakima, Washington, Marshall Kent. 140 miles from Seattle, Marshall Kent, first ever PBA Tour TV appearance as a professional. Just before the summer swing announced he was turning pro from his amateur status. He will graduate in July from Robert Morris of Illinois with a degree in business management and then pursue a master's. Comes in high, first shot, TV pro style, baby split. 310. Marshall will get his Masters, but not until he's done with his bowling career. And maybe that's after winning a Masters or two. You never know. Great future for this young man. Marshall Kent's got a Masters in bowling. He's the real deal. He's a real smart kid. He knows ball reaction and equipment. And obviously, he's got the physical ability to get it done. But there's a chop and a 10 stand in an open frame early for the kid. Mm. And he was talking with his tour reps, Jim Callahan and Hall of Famer Del Ballard, prior to the start of this match. And the strategy they were going over was, was simplistically brilliant. Fill frames, keep the ball on line, make your spares. Probably not going to take more than a low 200 game to win this match. Back to back three tens, and that's nerves. And in talking with Marshall, he said, you know, one of the keys that I struggle with is early timing. I have to make sure I stay late. When he gets the ball into the swing early, the ball's going to beat him to the foul line, and that's going to create a pull. That's exactly what happened the first two shots. Part of that nerves, part of that anxiety, part of that tough oil pattern. Didn't convert the first baby split. Three ten. How about this one? Got it! Nicely done on the left lane. And avoids a disastrous double open frame to begin the match. This spare certainly qualifies as part of our hammer. Tough spare replay. Not easily done, Randy. Well, the 310 is called the baby split for a reason. If you're going to shoot at a split, that's the one you want to shoot at. Ten down for Valenta. Play your game today. Let's take a look at Brian Valenta on the left lane in the first match. No loft. Got a couple of really nice breaks on that lane. Now check out what he's doing here in match two. Hello, airtime. You're right. How many feet down was that loft? I'll tell you after this shot right here. Wow. Airborne again. All 10 back. 60 feet to success on the left lane with a locker oh, ball. Right I'm not really sure that was 60 feet because 12 of it was in the air. 
Wow. Goodbye. Sorry, that was 15 feet. 45 feet to success. All right, that's that better. better. I didn't know you were that good at math. Syracuse graduate. So after back-to-back -back baby splits, Marshall Kent's going to make a ball change. We're 6'10 up, still has not found that 1 3 pocket on either lane. Great meeting with Marshall yesterday, very confident young man. Didn't think the bright lights, TV as a pro, would bother him much. Four step approach. Most of the players uh, these days are taking five, six, seven steps. Marshall Kent still trying to figure out what ball, what line, where to put his feet, what target to look at early in match number two. Marshall said it was yesterday. As an amateur being on TV before. Now just 0-2 with 204.50 average. Not great on television, but felt pretty comfortable with the whole atmosphere, the crowd especially, being interact a little bit. But it came across to me, first time meeting him yesterday, a very quiet young man, kind of reserved, haven't seen a lot of emotion on the TV pair here today so far. Look at the loft. Come on, kid. Whoa, it is nice. way off. Come on. One, two, two, five, nine. Up. Marshall bowled great at the 2013 Scorpion Championship in Vegas. He lost to Tom Smallwood because he left a pocket 7-10 in the ninth frame. That was a turning point. As you see, he makes a ball change again and then moves way in and tries the loft. Flags the head pin, leaving the 1-2-5-9. Doesn't come. Jesus Christ. 2-5 up on the 8 count. And Brian Valenta is sitting pretty here. The pressure bowling under the bright lights of, of the PBA Tour is, is tremendous. And then when you start with two opens in the first four frames, it just starts to pile on. It just starts to mount. Oh, come on. Hit. It does hit. Come on. All ten back. Shrapnel for Valenta. Standing in front of the ball return. We saw Tommy Jones do that last week. Look at Brian Valenta. In complete control. Knows exactly what his ball is going to do when it leaves his hand. It's just a matter of him throwing it properly and locating that bowling ball on the lane in the general vicinity of the correct target. Even more lofts. And a big strike. He's in his wheelhouse right now, Dave Ryan. That's what he likes to do. Nice call, bud. Nearly a 60 pin lead midway through the match. Wow. Brian Valenta is in the 220s. Marshall Kent's pulling 170. Mm. In front of you, kid. In front of you. Look how deep he's moved now. He's standing in front of the bar return as well. That's better. Again, the loft liked it, but on. 4 7 will stand for Marshall. Three time member of Junior Team Jeez. USA. Just another inch right of that. It's in the pocket. Two inches right of that. It misses that thing. There's a spare. Finally, another mark. Top of five for him today. Three opens for Marshall Kent as we check his arsenal. Well, he's used all of them except one. Right now, he's gone with the going with the Defiant Soul. 
strongest ball in his arsenal that he brought to this championship pair. It's moved way in, just trying to loft it like Brian Valenta is doing. It's normal when you see your opponent having success throwing it a certain way in a certain part of the lane. It's human nature to just migrate in there and try, and try to do the same exact thing. And that's what I'm talking about. That was just a little bit right of the last shot. Never hooks. Two tenths split. Mm. The problem is, is that Brian Valenta has a higher rev rate and really likes doing that. I mean, he is really in his comfort zone. That's not option A for Marshall Kent. I think it's more like option B or C. Ah, uh, come on, kid. And whips and Jeez. missing them both. And the kid has really struggled. Open frame after open frame, and he's down by 73 pins. Ryan Valenta, got to be thinking already about the two seed, Pete Weber, who waits the winner of this one. Brian Valenta's got to be pretty relaxed. Moments ago, he was speaking with his ball rep, Robert Lawrence, former champion. So the last few frames, get yourself right or what you're doing. That's what I was thinking, because if it's going to bounce there, well, if, it's gonna bounce, if it's going to bounce that deep, if I, yeah. go, if I go further left, I'm in trouble. Yeah, so save it as long as you can, as long as the match is in hand, yeah. okay? Yeah. Robert Lawrence, a former U.S. Open champion. Giving some great advice to young Brian Valenta making his first ever singles appearance on the PBA Tour. event so far. Well, a little luck never hurt anyone. The question is, how long will it take for that luck to run out for Brian Valenta? I think I've tripped more two pins today. So Randy Pete Weber awaits the winner, which will be Brian Valenta. He's watching in the background, seeing the movement, seeing the loft. Get your thoughts about Pete's approach after this. Nope. Even more locked. And help no. Oh, Messenger across the deck almost took out number 10. So what is Pete thinking about? Well, the problem, Dave, is that Pete can't do what Brian Valenta does. Your tournament leader, Bill O'Neill, can't do it. So I really don't know what they're thinking. You know, the, the thing about Pete Weber is that his unique ball roll, his, his bowling ball really doesn't read the front part of the lane. That would be the only saving grace for him because all the other players, their bowling balls have read the front part that has been torn apart by this man. So, Valerina right there. Ooh. You know, Pete's just got to find something and hopes and, and hope that he makes, you know, ten great shots and hits the pocket every shot. If he fishes around for, you know, half the game trying to figure out what ball, you know, standing where, what target do I look at, he's going to be in trouble. I won't get those hits. No luck. Nope. Not today, Marshall. Six pins still stands for the three seeds. I mean, this soil pattern, the way it's broken down, okay. 52 feet, is making a very talented player look very bad right now. Extra frame, the PBA's online video subscription service now available as an app for your mobile device. Check out Extra Frame on your iPad, iPhone, or Android. Extra Frame features live streaming from all PBA Tour events and select PBA 50 Tour events like the Northern California Classic. The finals of that event can be seen live tomorrow exclusively on Extra Frame, so don't miss any of the action. Head to PBA.com and click on the Extra Frame link for more information. Even more lost if that's possible. He's finally got a strike. <laughs> nice moment for the youngster. Well, he finally, finally lofted one online and he got it to face up into the 1 3. Oh, 
So there is the advice that Robert Lawrence gave Brian Valenta. The advice was don't continue to move deeper and burn up what whatever little oil is left because he still has two more games to win this title. He said take your bowling ball, move right. You don't need to strike anymore. And stay right of where you are so that he doesn't take the rest of the oil off the lane. It's great advice. Watch, you're not going to see any loft on this shot either. He's moved right. He's going to go a little bit straighter. He doesn't have to loft it. He doesn't care if he goes through the nose. If he goes Brooklyn, doesn't matter. And you know what's scary is he's got a pretty good look doing that. That looked all right. Brian Valenta has won the match over Marshall Camp from Yakima, Washington. A second win for Brian. Looking for his first ever title. He advances to play Pete Weber next. Brian Valenta easily handles the youngster Marshall Kent. 236, 165. He'll take on Pete Weber next. The brands of Evan Knight sponsor our look at this week's flashback. First event last year's summer swing in Milwaukee. Bats are open. Competed on the 52 foot lane conditioning pattern. Saw 24 year old Jake Peters from Decatur, Illinois, who had never finished higher than 19th in a PBA event. Knock off former Wichita State teammate Josh Blanchard. 245, 212 in the title match. The second year tour player had nine strikes in his semifinal victory over Aaron Lawrence. And began the championship match with five more. His first ever PBA title came last year at the PBA Summer Swing in Milwaukee. What a special moment for Jake Peters. Brian Valenta also bidding for his first career PBA Tour title. Could happen here today in Oklahoma City. Pete Weber stands in his way. The legendary PDW joined out by Randy. Thanks, Dave. Pete, earlier in the last match, Dave Ryan stumped me. He asked me what I thought your strategy would be going up against Brian Valenta, and I had absolutely no idea. Uh, you don't like lofting it like that. Um, it's certainly not your A game. What is your strategy going in? Well, you know, you're right. I, I'm not good at lofting the left gutter. Um, but like at the TSC, when I won, the guys were lofting the left gutter, and I had plenty of oil to work with. So I feel like I'm going to be a little farther right than he is, trying to get that hook fade going and hopefully hitting the pins. That's the key is getting the ball to hit the pins. Does this ever get old for you? No, it never gets old. TV is always fun. All right, Pete, good luck. Thanks. 118 TV wins. That's all he's done in his Hall of Fame career. 37 titles for the great Pete Weber. He'll test the youngster, Brian Malenta, next. Let's take a look at our Columbia 300 fun facts. Back to 82. First career PBA title for the great Pete Weber. Brian Malenta, Marshall Kent, not even born yet. And Bill O'Neill, the top seed, was only six months old. And Pete has done it at such a high level for so long. Extraordinary career. Ryan Malenta's first career TV appearance this year is going to obviously for his first title. Pete Weber, career TV appearance number 215. How's that? That's, I'm sorry, 215 results. That's a record, total record. 118.96 is his record. 134th appearance. Uh, he's got a hundred match total. That's what I meant. He's got 134 shows. Brian Valenta has one. Just trying to give you a big number. It's big, amazing. really big. <laughs> the first bad break Brian Valenta has received today he goes through the nose and leaves a four six. And can it be an open frame? The number two seed is tied for third time on the all-time list with 37 PBA Tour titles from St. Anne, Missouri, Hall of Famer Pete Weber. PBA and USBC Hall of Famer. 98 inducted in the PBA Hall of Fame. Get started. 6-10 up. I can actually throw it right a little bit on this lane. With a win today, 
It would give Pete 38 career PBA titles, which would break a tie with Norm Duke. And whoever would move into sole possession of third place on the PBA's career title list behind only Walter A. Williams Jr. at 47 and Earl Anthony at 43. Would that be something? Takes care of the 6'10. Me and Dad, Dick, the only father-son duo ever to be elected to the PBA Hall of Fame. And the accolades just go on and on. You know, he's arguably, Pete Weber. Excuse me, he's arguably the greatest player to, that's ever thrown a bowling ball. If you, if you just look at what he's done throughout his career, the longevity, winning majors at age 50. Walter Ray's got the most titles, followed by Earl. Weber in third with Duke, but from a physical standpoint only, probably the greatest physical talent to ever throw. Him around. On the left lane, two up. It's all right. Beat Tulsa yesterday. It's all right. So much to overtake. Nice, Long very time. good. Brandon rival Norm Duke, or by himself on that nice list. Is good. He's got such great touch at the bottom of the swing, and I think that. It really bodes well for what the old pattern's doing right now. Ah, come on. I got a break on that line because I thought I flagged ahead. The one thing Brian Valenta has not been through his victories over Mika and Marshall Kent is nervous. He's gotten some tremendous breaks. No, yes, he, but he's been pretty relaxed. He was nervous to start that first match with Meek, I promise you. He was nervous in his interview. There's nobody in the history of this sport that's ever made television for the first time and wasn't nervous. Trust me, the, his insides wanted to be on the outside. But he got through it with some great breaks. That's why he got through Mika. That was a great shot he threw there, Dave. Again, lots of loft. All right. Let's go further. He's going to move farther to the left. Again, lots of locks. All ten down again. Threads the round. The one thing that Brian Valenta has done brilliantly today is string strikes. But there's one thing he can't do, and that's intimidate Pete Weber. Nobody can on this tour. Fourth time that guy's walked through here. <laughs> That's about the fourth time that guy's walked through here with a bunch of drinks in his hand. <laughs> He's having a little fun. But now it's all business. She goes. Yeah. Who do you think you are? I yeah. am. This is an unusual trip for it's almost like the pins know who just threw the bowling ball and, and they're playing the wrong theme song. Look at that trip for. I changed it last year. Pete <laughs> changing bowling balls from one lane to the next. It's a lot of fun to watch, win or lose. And clearly wants his theme song changed. That guy running the jukebox better get that right. <sighs> All 10 down for one of the games. All time great entertainers. Come on now. Always a treat to watch Pete in action. You know, the, the one thing people don't realize about Weber is he's a great sportsman, too. He's the first one to congratulate you when you beat him. He's the first one to accept defeat. Just a lot of fun to watch. Now, speaking of fun to watch, check out this. That's past the arrows. Come on. That's past the arrows in the air. 17 feet of loft. Are you kidding me? That's a 15-pound bowling ball being lofted 16, 17 feet down the lane, right over the first arrow on the left side of the lane. I've never seen that before. Not Dave, that kind of loft. None of this happened until you showed up. 300 game. Guys making two eight tens. Now this. 
I appreciate your confidence. Oh, no. Oh, my. Didn't like it at all. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Got a huge break with a six. That was a good nine, too. Now, is that nine or, or eight? Because there was another pin standing in the gutter. Come on. Okay, it's nine. I'm kidding. Once it leaves the playing surface, it's... Uh, Oh, no. Oh, my. I wonder if he could throw it through the masking unit. The masking unit is what sits right in front of the pins. Do you think he could get one that far down? I don't think with any accuracy, obviously. Pretty far. Takes a re-rack. How about climbing the ladder? Tough challenge for Brian Valenta. I almost wouldn't want it any other way. At least I know when I when I go and win, I've earned it because I'm going to run through a lot of people, a couple of people with a lot of titles. So I'm the inexperienced one. Hopefully, I can use it to my advantage. <laughs> Today, waiting for the six pin to get reset on that left lane. I could have swam down there. <laughs> Yeah, I'm almost on levity. I can't, I can't bowl with that one. He's a real, Ryan. He's a real fun guy. You gotta appreciate the fact guy. he's so relaxed and having fun out here. He's just a good guy. He's got a good heart. That's a distraction. And, you know, he's having the time of his life right now. I remember when I made my first uh, show. It was just, it, it was like an out of body experience. It was unbelievable. He's, he's Peterson, right? Shadow hey, bowling. <laughs> uh, Come on, bud. He's just having fun with it, and that's what he should be doing. Does this work? Yeah. Does this button work? The machine's actually shut down. <laughs> okay, today, boys. <laughs> Play a little fiddle. <laughs> we'll take a break here while things get reorganized. In Oklahoma City, both bowlers await the conclusion of our great match today. Uh, for a short delay, the match has resumed. Brian Valenta did pick up the spare with a six pin on the left lane. And now it's back to Pete Weber. Short delay, Randy. How does it affect each bowler, you think? Well, Brian Valenta actually got another practice ball on the left lane, opposite where he would throw his next shot. Pete Weber opted not to use practice shot. My, th my thought is that when you're 51 years old, the longer you sit, the stiffer you get. Weber said he didn't need it, wasn't going to help him. We had a minor mechanical delay, and now we're back to bowling. Come on, Pete! Come on, Pete! Pete Weber comes in high, though, and a baby split the 310 after the delay. Looked a little soft, and that was the weight that Pete Weber had to endure while we waited for the breakdown to get fixed show you the rest of this match uninterrupted no more commercial breaks <laughs> baby split yes big one let me jump some more <laughs> maybe he should have jumped up and down before he threw that first shot and warmed himself up it's a great spare conversion Pete Weber is one of the best spare shooters that I've ever seen I think any time I've ever seen him leave the 3, 6, 7, 10, his conversion rate on that is like 75%. Scary. Another reason he's one of the all-time greats. That's high again, though. 6, 9 standing for Pete. Wow. Well, he liked that, and it still went high using a... Totally defiant on one lane and hypercell on the other. Hypercell on the right lane. Pretty cool moment during the brief mechanical mechanical delay here. Brian Valenta told Pete Weber, "Hey, this is a dream come true for me to face you on TV." Pretty cool. I mean, that's something. It really is. It, and it's something to be a part of that, not only from a broadcast standpoint, but from a player standpoint. Again, the loss. See there. 
Four pin. Come on. First ever TV appearance. Still going well. The 29 year old from outside Chicago. Big, strong kid, just absolutely pummeling the synthetic lane surface with that loft. Man, he's, uh, he's gotten the job done. First two games, both in the 230s right now, leading the great Pete Weber by two pins through six frames. Oh, yeah. oh no! What a late break to avoid the 7-10. Only the 10 pin up now for Bryant. Didn't like it when he let go of it. But look at this ball churn and grab the lane surface. Almost leaves a pocket 7-10. 7 falls late. This is crazy pin action. Shrapnel everywhere. <laughs> it's almost like the pins were made out of balsa wood. Okay. Got his 10 pin, has his mark. Come on. If nothing else, it's entertaining. You got the great Pete Weber. You've got Brian Valenta throwing it halfway down the lane in the air. It's good stuff. Seventh frame for Pete. Works on a spare here. on the six. I can't get it to the right. Throw it to the right a little bit, Pete. Jesus. Either that or just move in a little bit deeper, Pete. Although it looks like he can't move much farther left. Six big spare. Pete Weber tells us winning just never gets old for him. He loves to compete. No, it does not. Uh, e even at 52, it's still fun. I still love to travel. I still love to bowl. And I, I still love beating these kids. I mean, they think they're all that, but they're really not. <laughs> and Brian Valenta would certainly qualify as one of those kids, 29 years old, who's never won a uh, tour, never been on TV until today. Look at the numbers. Seven this time. Wow, did he give that shot the business. Some serious hand rotation at the bottom of the swing. Watch the left, excuse me, the right hand circle around the ball. It started left, the inside part of the ball, and went all the way around to the outside part of the ball, creating that massive axis rotation. It's good stuff. He made that, you know, he moved in just a little bit, but he decided, you know what, I'm going to get my hand around the side of this ball to get it to push to the right. It was a really nice shot, only to leave the shaker seven. You can hear him just cram that thumb in to the first knuckle. It's great. Same hit that Weber didn't carry, Valenta does carry. All the mojo in the Valenta corner. Here you go, that's so awesome. It looks like it just fell out of the top of a tree or something and hits the lane with some massive revolutions and rotation. Good stuff. Big shot coming up here, sets up the tenth frame, the foundation frame, ninth frame. Brian Valenta could strike out for 236. Pete Weber's maxed out at 223. That was his first strike since the fourth. Hit! Whoa, Boy, it's a baby split. That would have been real trouble. But avoids the 5 7 split. The <laughs> 7 pin falls late. Watch this pit action. Solid nickel. Ball doesn't drive hard enough to get the 5 out. And you hear Brian Valenta say, solid nickel, referring to the 5 pin. 
He'll take that though. That Absol five seven. It, you know what? He still has, he still maintains a three pin lead with a spare here. The only problem is Weber now can strike out ninth and tenth and shut him out. Look out. Okay. If Weber strikes right. out, Weber will see 223. Valenta's max score now 216. Hey, conventional spare shooting right there, buddy. It's got to start right here. Weber hasn't, hasn't thrown a strike since the fourth frame. In fact, Weber's only thrown two strikes the entire game. Double in the third and fourth. That's been it for Pete. No open no, frames. Foundation frame. Big shot. Back to back, seven pins on pocket hits. Kind of back end reaction. Pete's not unable to drive the pins hard enough into the seven. Really good shot out of his hand. Not a very good, re not a very good result. And he whiffs on the step. <laughs> Great. Thank well, you very much. He's stuck again. Shooting a spare. About these, but. And this time it's a whiff. Pete rarely has any issues at all with his footwork, but you can see it right there. He dead stuck. And the gap widens for Brian Valenta on the bench. That was a big miss. Pete still can't find the look. Highlight, 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 highlight. Really? No, better not do that. 5 8, double wood. Different ball game if Weber strikes in the 8th and ninth frame. He avoids the open. He would have taken the lead. And he probably doesn't make the shot he just made there. Covers nicely. Coach, damn it. Great. Working on a double before the lane broke down and hasn't thrown a strike since that. <laughs> Declined the one practice ball. Could have had. By PBA yeah, rules, Blenta yeah. took it. And there's a 10 pick. Come on, get him off. Valenta just needs good count. Can I get a re rack or no? Eight on the first ball, and he will move on to bowl Bill O'Neill for the title. Crazier things have happened. Avoid any kind of split, any kind of seven count split. Eight or better, he wins. There's right. the one more, one more, one more pin, one more and he's done it. He's knocked off the great Pete Weber. With 37 titles and more than 3.7 million dollars in career earnings, Brian Valenta's first ever TV show. And he's going to face Bill O'Neill for the championship. Brian Valenta from Lockport, Illinois, outside Chicago, has done it again. Climbing the ladder, continues his tremendous day. Latest victim, Hall of Fame legend Pete Weber. Championship round next. Brian Valenta has knocked off legendary Pete Weber, 204 to 190. Brian's first ever TV appearance, and he's climbed the ladder all the way to the championship match. We'll take on Bill O'Neill from Langhorne, Pennsylvania, just outside Philly. A four-time titleist on the PBA Tour. Ninth year out on tour for Bill. Let's learn more about Bill in his own words. I'm a family man. Uh, I have a, a beautiful, lovely wife, Christy. Uh, I have a 16-month-old son, Gavin. Uh, and who makes it very hard for me to practice these days. Uh, it takes up a lot of my time, but I wouldn't have it any other, any other way. Uh, I'm a very dry sense of humor person. Uh, 
basically the humor that you see, see on Seinfeld, that would be uh, that would be my personality. All right, Bill, thanks. 2012 Alka-Seltzer Plus Cold Cheetah Championship in Vegas. Last time he won on tour. Would love to change that here in Oklahoma City. He'll take on Valencia for the title next. So how did we get to this point of the match? Let's take a look at our GEICO Championship recap, Mr. Peterson. All right, Rhino, match number one, Brian Valenta taking on Mika Koibuniemi. A couple of really nice Brooklyn breaks like that, and he takes down Major Mika 237 to 172. Then match number two here, the Badger Championship, Valenta taking on... Newcomer professional Marshall Kent. Try to hook a little, hook a little. Some more breaks going Brian Valencia's way. Another five-bagger, another 230 game. He takes down Marshall Kent, 236, 165. And then in the match we just witnessed, Brian Valencia taking on arguably the greatest bowler of all time, PDW, Pete Weber. Check out the trick four by Pete. That was his only double of the match. Brian Valenta squishing the rack trip with a 5-7 out. He beats Pete Weber 204 to 190, setting up a great champion match here at the Badger Championship. Step ladder bracket. So Pete Weber still remains tied for third all time with Norm Duke. 37 career titles. Number 38. Not today. Valenta O'Neill for the title. Brian Valenta's first ever TV show. He's all the way to the championship match. The tournament leaders, a four-time PBA Tour titleist from Langhorne, Pennsylvania, the real deal, Bill O'Neill. 0506 PBA Rookie of the Year, six-time Team USA member as well. Great international experience. He was an All-American at Saginaw Valley State. Three-time Collegiate National Bowl of the Year. A pile of great career so far with love to get his fifth title here in Oklahoma City. He's off to a great start on the left lane, going right at that one-three pocket. Well, he's only about 20 boards right of Brian Valenta throwing the high hard one right up the 16th board. He says, you know what? I'm just going to throw it straight right at the one-three pocket. I mean, this guy's like pink eye, hard to get rid of, right? He just won't go away. Brian Valenta has just been extremely impressive on the telecast today, trying to climb this ladder, trying to win for the very first time, making his very first singles appearance. I'm extremely impressed with his performance today. Been remarkable. What a story. Three. It does. Great hit of the five. Brian told us yesterday, got some great advice from Sean Rash. He's already won on the PBA Summer Swing and at a 300 game. Parker Bone the third among many. Made his TV show, told him just to breathe, relax, stay slow with your tempo. Keep up your good humor, which he's done. He's been pretty relaxed overall. After a pretty nervous start. Maybe the real deal. Will end Valenta's run. A couple strikes for each to open up our championship match. Take a look here where Bill O'Neill is playing to start this match. That went right over the 14th board, just to the right of the center arrow. Here on the right, take a look at where Brian Valenta is playing. <laughs> A little different? Vast difference. Unbelievable. Look at the loft. He's yeah. throwing it so far down lane, Randy. Bill O'Neill using 60 feet of lane. Brian Valenta using about 40 feet of lane. <laughs> You're right. Four pin. It's okay. That's a good shot. Keeping it nice and tight on line. Bill O'Neill just leaving the four pin. Brian Valenta, I believe, is going to have his hands full in this match if Bill O'Neill continues to make the kind of shots he's made through three frames. 
Time wide missed right. It, missed it, missed it, missed it, missed it. Way missed right. It, it. One, two, four. It's really the first errant shot that Brian's made. I mean, in, in quite some time. Yeah, the couple of Brooklyn's against Mika, a couple of shots through the nose, but that's the fir first shot I can remember that's been wide right in quite some time. Maybe he's starting to feel the pressure. Maybe he's starting to think about how close. Cover nicely how close he is to possibly winning for the first time. And that's the worst thing that a player could do in his position. Long climb up the ladder all the way from the first match to the title match now. Jake Peters, defending champion from outside Las Vegas. Everybody's buddy Stuart Williams. Another Chris Lowshedder sighting. Could not defend his title in the summer swing. Sean Rash did win, though, and had a 300 game this summer in Oklahoma City. Left lane, again, big block. Big result. Come on. All 10 down. Nice comeback. Nice shot after the air shot on the right lane. Just kind of win. I mean, he still looks good. He still looks like he's, uh, he's staying within himself, and that was evident with that shot right there. The best advice he could get right now from his tour rep is don't think, it can only hurt the ball club. Ah. Ah. He didn't like it. For good reason. One, two, four, eight, double wood with two, eight. Fainting here for Bill. And the problem is he's working on a spare. He got it uh, maybe about an inch and a half right of target. And now he loses count because he was on a spare. You see how he went from 49 to 65 from frames 2 to 3, and that's because he was working on a spare. If it was on a strike and he makes the spare, no harm done. Lots of cover here. Does so successfully for his mark. Come on. Yeah, that Black Widow legend in Bill O'Neill's arsenal. That's what he's decided to go with. Working that towel, trying to get 52 feet of oil off of that bowling ball. Really good shot there, online and not right in the face of the one three. Big strike finally for O'Neill. Valenta steps up, working on a strike for frame. Chance to go up 12 pins here. He struck three of the four frames so far in our championship match. Last 10 down. I've seen guys loft it before on this tour, but I don't think I've ever seen this much loft. I've seen Robert Smith, PBA champion Robert Smith, loft it. Tommy Jones lofting it just last week. We've seen Belmonte loft it on this tour, but I don't think I've ever seen this much airtime. I mean, this is literally a third of the way down the lane. Two big strikes for Valenta. Confidence. Peaking. Closing in on history. His first ever PBA Tour title. 
And it could come here on CBS Sports Network in Oklahoma City. Championship match rolls on from Oklahoma City. And Bill O'Neill, the top seed, take out the four seed, Brian Valenta. All started, step ladder format with a win over superstar Mika Koivunemi. Third time Bill has been on back-to-back -back TV shows. Four and five all time. Not appearances prior. TV finals. That is the championship match. And he finds a good look on the right lane. Well, Bill's not going away. He's a proven winner, major championship winner. He found something in practice that looked good to his eye that he felt he could compete against Brian Valenta with, and that is really straight, real direct from just inside, or excuse me, just outside third arrow. Seventh frame looks for a turkey here, can cut the lead at two for Valenta. championship match. <laughs> they talked about Bill being a major winner. 2010 U.S. Open was when he had his major championship. Well, this was inside of target, but he threw it fast enough for it to get enough of the 1-3 trips to 4-7 out late. No! <laughs> we have a match. Lenta looks for the four bagger. Oh. Ten pin. Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. Nice shot. Boy, that was a really good shot. A ringing ten on the right lane, and you know that says a lot about his character and his moxie when he answers the bell after O'Neill comes at him with a three bagger to cut the deficit to two. Now it's a one pin match if he converts the ten pin. Which he does. He's in a fight right now, Dave. He's got to tighten up his shoelaces, cinch up that belt. He's got three more frames. He's three frames away from capturing his first ever title on this tour. As you see the max scores there, Bill O'Neill 265, Valenta 256. It's a one-pin match. time on that left lane now it's Valenta's turn to trip the four pin couldn't have come at a better time for Brian look at that oh yeah just enough of that four pin two pin goes to the sidewalk takes the four seven out oh yeah come on eighth frame for O'Neill goes for the four bagger and a lead Going right up that one three pocket, 60 feet to success for Bill O'Neill. And he leads by nine pins. Well, Bill O'Neill looks like he's back. Remember, we talked about the swing change or the approach change that he made. He found a flaw in his swing. His swing was bumping out at the top of the swing. He corrected his fourth step. His fourth step was going to the right. He worked on making his fourth step go nice and straight. All of a sudden, his swing line fell into place. Bill O'Neill looks like he's back. He's got a nine pin lead, can increase it to 19 with another strike here in the ninth frame, working on four in a row. How about the five bagger? Foundation frame. Four pin. In. Oh. Wobbles. Wow. That stays upright. The pin and back of the four pin kept the four pin up. Watch this. This is some kind of pit action. That was the only thing that kept that four pin up. Otherwise, it, that pin rolling across takes care of it. What a great title match. If Valenta carries that ringing 10 in the seventh, he would be on, t on pace for 270. What? Biggest shot 
of Valencia's career right here, ninth frame. Chance for a double. And the lead. Six pin. Oh, my fault, my fault. He got a little soft with him, got it in just a little, but only leaving the six pin. Still in good shape. However, Bill O'Neill, strike out in the tenth frame and win this match. There is nothing Brian Valenta can do now to stop Bill O'Neill. Well, hey. And he's trailing in the match. Cool. He strikes out, he shoots 236. Bill O'Neill is already at 234. Rerack. Okay. Takes a re-rack. Was hoping Mom Cynthia could come and watch. She's back home in suburban Chicago recovering from bronchitis. Brian sending his best wishes to Mom. One more and at least nine like more, will force Bill O'Neill to throw two in the tenth. If he strikes and gets eight, Bill O'Neill can go strike spare and we have a tie. Beautiful shot here. Beautiful shot. Brian needs to compose himself now, Dave. Dig deep. He's got to have this one, in my opinion, to have a chance to win. Takes his second allowed re rack of the match. Buys himself some more time. Pressure is on. his time when you see stuff like this happen it's destiny what a huge break look at this trip four that is so unconventional for a trip four pin it's got all the signs pointing to that young man right there winning his first ever title all the way across the deck come on Spin it. Pitch. Pan takes out before got to get it got to get at least nine very important big shot right here nine or better Nine, seven stands. But did you see how he got nine? The late hit. There was seven. There, he got seven. Then it was eight. Then this is unbelievable. I mean, if you're Bill O'Neill, what are you thinking? This guy's got more lives than a cat. It's unbelievable how many breaks Bill O'Neill can't be shut out. He needs two strikes in the tenth frame. I'll put him in the two forties. Two strikes and two pins. Gotta have it. Whoa. Almost leaves the stone seven. Are you kidding me? What a great shot from Bill O'Neill right there. This guy's fought back, worked on his game, worked real hard. Brilliant shot right here. Bill O'Neill needs one more just like it. And he will win his fifth PBA title. Nothing that man can do. Watch on the bench. That's what he needed. 
Wade for his fifth career PBA Tour title. Bill O'Neill. For a long time. Thank you, Hammer. Thank you for coming out with the Black Widow legend. Wouldn't be here without him. Thank you. Love you, Mom, Dad, Sister Gavin. Love you. For you guys. Rawls family watching back home in suburban Philadelphia. Bill O'Neill. Had to watch since the 2012 Gina Championship in Las Vegas. The wait is over for Bill. A PBA Tour champion again. We'll hear from Bill and Randy when we return. The Geico PBA Summer Swing Badger Open is brought to you by Motive Bowling. Get motivated. And by Ebonite. Bowl it forward. Grand Casino Resort. In Oklahoma City, has seen the PBA Badger Open Championship to Bill O'Neill as he rallies a tremendous head-to-head -head matchup with Brian Valenza bidding for his first ever title. Randy is joined by both finalists. Thanks, Dave. Wow. That's one of the greatest title matches I've ever seen, but one of the greatest performances by a first-time player, his first ever career television finals on the PBA Tour. Brian... How does it feel? What, what, what's going through your mind now after it's all said and done? Well, I'm extremely happy. Um, I'm a little disappointed I didn't win, but I mean, I lost to the hottest bowler that was this week, definitely by far. He's been throwing the ball great, and I made him perform, and he did. I mean, I'm ecstatic, though. I mean, it's first show, had a lot of fun. So, Were you surprised that your strategy held up as long as it did? Yes and no. Um, I, I, I flirted with danger really early, and then um, the game against Pete got a little interesting, and then uh, I just got to keep going forward with it. Can you get any more air time than you had? Can, how, how far can you actually loft the ball down the lane <laughs> and strike? Uh, on this, I don't know because of how much they bounce, but uh, I'm pretty sure if you uh, look online, Kira Lear, I showed you how to do it. Hey, listen, you got a lot to be proud of. Congratulations on a great performance. Thanks, Brian. Bill O'Neill, you, you were the only guy that could take down Brian Valenta. Nobody else could play the deep inside line and be effective, and he just wouldn't go away. What did you see in practice that told you to play farther right? Well, first of all, uh, hats off to Brian. I mean, that in performance was incredible. To be able to play that, that part of the lane and be able to bowl the scores that he did was, was amazing. Um, the reason why I didn't play there is because I threw about four shots there in practice and didn't barely hit the head pin or Brooklyn. So I said, I'm out, and i got to try to find something else. So I found a little hold around 14, 15, and just said, I'm just not going to give away the pocket. If it doesn't carry, it doesn't carry, but I can't give away the pocket. Did you watch his 10th frame? Oh, of course. Yeah, I mean, I always watch. I mean, you probably shouldn't, but, uh, you know, it, I, I knew that I was going to need a double to win. So no matter what he did, I was preparing myself to throw that double. Did anything that he did in the 10th frame affect you in any way mentally when he rolled the four pin? Then he needs nine to force you to double. He goes through the nose. There's seven standing. Then there's eight standing. Then he gets nine. Now you have to double. Did any of that affect you mentally? You know, one of the, this is one of the few times in my life where it didn't. You know, I was really confident that I was going to get up there and double. So I, I just didn't care. And, um, you know, it paid off. I threw two really good shots, and here we are. Obviously, that... Uh, fourth step that you worked on getting that four step straighter in front of you has really worked i mean to me you look as you look like the old bill o'neill is that how you felt you know i feel like my old self and um it's just it's so much confidence now and you know it's proof i got up there and you know it's something that i was working on only been been like three or four weeks you know sometimes when you work on something you go back to your old habits when you need it and i, and I didn't so that that means a lot congrats on title number five bill thank you very much The real deal, Bill O'Neill, was fun to watch here today in Oklahoma City. Outlasting Brian Valenta from Lockport, Illinois. It's Bill's day, fifth career title. We'll wrap things up from OKC next. First time in the PBA Summer Swing, a top seed has won as Bill O'Neill takes a thrill over Brian Valenta, 243-235. Randy Peterson was a lot of fun to watch this match head-to-head. -head. What a battle in the championship round. I'm exhausted just f uh, from calling the action. You know, you, you just waited for Valenta to fade, and he never did. And, and that was exciting enough in itself, in itself to watch. And then Bill O'Neill stepping up in the 10th frame after what Valenta went through, tripping the four, tripping the split out. O'Neill needs two hits. He gets them. It was one of the best...
title matches I've ever seen. Not the best. The best is, who do you think you are? I am Pete Weber striking out to win by one at a U.S. Open. However, this probably top five for me. That says a lot for Randy Peterson, who's called a lot of bowling on TV over the years. Congratulations to Bill O'Neill, winner of the 2014 PBA Badger Open, part of the Oklahoma's Grand Casino Resort PBA Summer Swing. Be sure to be with us next week for the PBA Oklahoma Open at 7 Eastern. And for complete post-game coverage of today's event, head to PBA.com's Extra Frame right after the conclusion of our show. For a preview of next week's telecast, check out Extra Frame on Monday. Randy Peterson and Dave Ryan saying so long from Oklahoma City. Congratulations to Bill O'Neill, a five-time PBA Tour champion.